Hey y'all, welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. My name is Corey Ashton, and this is a weekly program where I get drunk at my desk and talk about WordPress nerdy stuff. I'm kidding, I don't get drunk. That's actually a shout out to Matt Belisai, who does his weekly wine about it. If y'all haven't caught that yet, it's viral off of BuzzFeed. Check that out. It's pretty crass and ridiculous, but at the same time, some of his episodes are pretty darn funny. All right, now today we are talking about subdomain versus subfolder. So this is a hot topic, and I'm sure that the thread down below is going to blow up with all sorts of people who are highly, highly opinionated about this topic. If you're looking to choose uh, which one to use for better SEO practices, does using a subdomain hurt your SEO? Or does it hurt your Google ranking? It's a question that has been asked for all of ages. Uh, people have asked this for years and years and years now. Matt Cutts from Google answered it at one certain point, and I'll give you the reference to that video. Uh, however, SEO companies and SEO individuals who are specialized in this industry have for months and years even gone back and forth haggling over what is best practices for your website. So today I'm going to chime in with my two cents and give you my opinion as to what I've found their opinions to be, all right? Um, so, and if you have any questions on this further, you're more than welcome to put them in the description box below. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also check out my class over on uh, webtegrity.com. I'll put the link in the description box below on where you can learn more about the basics of SEO if you're struggling. The, this would be the basics, uh, best practices of SEO, all right? Um, so subdomain versus subfolder. Let me talk to you about what uh, these actually look like. So a subdomain would be this. Uh, let's say blog.mydomainname.com, right? Domain. And then a folder would be mydomain.com forward slash blog. All right, these are the two variations that a lot of people struggle with and they wonder if putting things on a subdomain like this will actually affect the ranking of my root domain, this. Or if having my root domain first and then putting my blog over here in a little subfolder would be better practices. Truthfully, this is a huge topic. If you do a Google search for this, you're gonna see all sorts of highly opinionated uh, people chiming in. What is my preference? I'm going to chime in and say that best practices for me and what we've found directly with our clients at Webtegrity is go ahead and put them in a subfolder. If you're just starting out and you're able to manage a, a large blog, if that's the way you're gonna grow it with your information-based site or your business site, uh, having a blog inside of a subfolder is pretty fantastic. One of the reasons why I suggest doing that is because that is the natural way WordPress allows your blog to be displayed on your website. So you can uh, kind of cross market everything very, very easily. You can have your most recent posts appearing on your homepage. You can have your categories running down your sidebar and everything can be just kind of in one spot. If you were to break these apart and put your website, uh, I'm sorry, your blog rather, on a subdomain and kind of have a totally separate install, sometimes it's more difficult than to kind of cross market the two and have the content from the subdomain actually appear on the root domain. Uh, it takes quite a bit of coding to make that happen. So I just wanna uh, throw that out there to you. If you are in fact though, uh, already have a blog somewhere else and you're just trying to uh, have them all kind of sit on the same domain in some sense, then using a subdomain would probably be your better option. I'm going to show you a couple of different um, uh, highly opinionated people and all of these are very recent. I went through Google and made sure that the, the references that I'm showing you uh, were in 2015 and of course we're just at the end of 2015 moving into 2016 so these would all be relevant still. Subdomain versus subfolders an SEO guide to the facts. This guy, Michael Martinez here, uh, once again, he slams uh, Moz and says basically that they don't know what they're talking about and that using a subdomain would work fine as long as you do it right. So he talks repeatedly uh, uh, and references the articles that I'm about to show you, which are these. This is from Moz. If you're familiar at all with SEO, you've probably heard of Moz and especially with Word, WordPress. Um, this is just about the same time uh, that that other article was written and apparently they were referencing this article. 
Um, they have whiteboard Fridays and they talk about specifically subdomain versus subfolders. And uh, if you were to read the transcript, you're going to see right away that they do talk about Google stating that they've made strides in this area. Um, but uh, they definitely, if you read through this entire article, and I'll put the link in the description box below, they definitely recommend that you keep your blog in a subfolder. So not on a subdomain, but on a subfolder in this style. Um, they reference a couple of different um, a couple of different case studies that they followed and even their own case study that they did with their own website and they show you actual Google Analytics traffic as the result of uh, the crash that happened whenever they moved things to a subdomain. The argument is that Google is smart enough now to realize that a subdomain is part of a root domain. Um, and while Google is incredibly smart and they are progressively getting more, more smart, more intelligent on how to crawl your website, uh, we're still seeing people uh, result better typically with subfolders. So uh, another article that was uh, on Moz uh, is all about domains. And you know what? This is just a great article for best practices when it comes to purchasing a domain name or how to set up your subdomain versus subfolder. Um, if Should you use a hyphen or not? Should you use a key rich uh, domain? What does that look like? Um, does the history of the, your domain name matter? Meaning uh, how long it has been uh, active? Does that matter? There's all sorts of questions that will be answered in this really great uh, article that I found for you. So I'm going to put the link to this one in the description box below as well. Um, the other article that I found that was highly uh, really gr a great reference for me actually was um, this I want my name now both this article from Michael as well as this article from Moz reference this article this is one of the case studies I want my name dot com uh, walks you through the case study that they did when they switched their blog from a subfolder into a subdomain and they basically tell you and you can see here uh, th just the nosedive that their website took. So um, unfortunate that uh, we've learned our lessons the hard way, but uh, we do all this and we do this even WordPress Wednesday to help y'all in our WordPress world uh, make better choices and hopefully have a better experience with your online marketing versus what we do as professionals when we even get it wrong. So I'm sure that everybody has their opinion on this. If you have in fact done both, a subdomain as well as a subfolder. Would you put your case study or your experiences uh, in the description box below and share them with our community here on our YouTube channel? Again, I'm I'm just speaking from my personal experience with our clients. Y'all chime up and let me know how you've done with subdomain versus subfolder for best SEO practices practices. I hope you're having a really great Wednesday and I will see you next week on WordPress Wednesday. Bye y'all.